What's going on, everybody? This is JVB from the Post Game Report Podcast. Here I'm playing Sackboy on the PlayStation 5. Let me tell you something. Sony did a great job. Well, the developers did a great job of implementing the DualShock 5 with Sackboy. A lot of people kind of ignore the DualShock 5 until they experience, and it really does add a new layer to your gameplay. And with Sackboy, there's no exception here. It is, you know, every every time you, you're on a different surface, you feel it. You, the music, because of the built-in 3D engine on the PlayStation 5, you hear all types of different sounds. And, and the soundtrack for Sackboy is great as well. Now, I want to talk about MLB The Show because I mentioned the DualShock 5, the new controller for the PlayStation 5. And to me, that's going to give it a substantial edge when it comes to choosing between the two versions now some people might say because it's on game pass for the xbox that that gives it an edge but if you are a fan of the franchise and you happen to own both consoles number one you're lucky because both consoles are pretty hard to find especially a playstation 5 so a lot of playstation 4 owners are gonna buy mlb the show 21 because these consoles aren't readily available. Now, on Game Pass, yeah, you can play it if you happen to own both consoles, PS5 and the Xbox Series X. I ignore the S. It's a, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't belong in the market anyway. So the Series X and the PlayStation 5, right? Basically, they're going to look the same. But the, differi the differential or the... Or the defining factor that's what i'm gonna call it the defining factor the x factor is going to be that controller for the playstation 5 and that's a fact you cannot argue that you cannot say it's not going to add a new layer to your gameplay experience because it will just imagine all the stuff they are going to do with mlb the show 21 on the playstation 5 with and that dual 5 dual shock 5 controller and then you throw in the 3d audio the tempest engine just imagine playing with some headphones and you're hearing everything going on surrounding the battle or the pitcher. And if you're in Yankee Stadium, I'm, I'm from the Bronx, born and raised, big Yankee fan. So you have the four train in the distance and then you have the crowd behind you while surrounding you, basically. And then you have, you know, let's say you're batting, you're on the batter's mound. You have the umpire behind you. You have your coach making calls. You have the pitcher in front. I mean, it's going to be crazy with that 3D engine. And then the haptic feedback, the amount of different levels of feedback you're going to receive in this game should be freaking insane. If you're running on dirt or you're running on grass, imagine when you're running on grass in the outfield. And then you feel the difference when you're running on dirt. That's going to happen with the DualShock, DualShock 5 controller. And it will. <laughs> it's pretty guaranteed. So some people want to differentiate the two and find a reason to play one or the other. To me, that's a huge reason. Number one, it's going to be hard to find these consoles, these new generation consoles. And number two, if you happen to own both, you might as well stick with the one that the console that has always had MLB The Show as a as a an exclusive franchise now it's going to be unusual to see it on an xbox and even more unusual to see it on game pass because it's a it's a subscription service so you're paying the 15 dollars a month or 10 you know if you don't want xbox live and you're essentially renting the game and then when you get tired of it you don't have to play it no more you don't have to feel like hey you know what I, didn't, I bought this game, I didn't really like it, and I kind of spent my money on something I wasn't, I shouldn't have bought. And I, believe me, I've been there. I've been there ever since I started playing video games. Especially before the internet and magazines came out with reviews. You kind of had to look at the back of the box and determine like, oh man, this game looks awesome. And then you go home and it looks nothing like the, the back of the box. And you had no idea what the hell you were getting yourself into and you had to basically you know accept what you bought so having this game rental service 
gives you that flexibility. If you if you never were a fan of MLB The Show 21, then you know what? You can play, you can try, you can brag about it on the social, you know, networks, and then never touch it again, right? That's that's what a lot of people are going to do on the Xbox side. But those who have been dedicated to MLB The Show and the franchise. A lot, of, a lot of those sales are going to come from the PlayStation 4 simply because there aren't PlayStation 5s readily available. And that's the inevitable. You know, that's inevitable. And then you have on the PlayStation 5, you're going to have the same visuals, right? I, I, I don't think there's going to be a difference in visual quality between the PlayStation and the Xbox. But that haptic feedback, that controller, that is the that is what is going to set it apart from the Xbox series. And that's just my opinion. And here's the thing, right? Like I, I listen to a few podcasts or I watch them on YouTube. Now I'm very old fashioned when it comes to the word podcast. And I've, you know, on numerous occasions have gone on Twitter and said that I feel that a podcast is a piece of audio that is downloadable, uploaded into a service, you know, edit it, which you are listening to now. But what I do different is that I'll take the audio and then I'll put it in YouTube with a vid with a game playing as well. So I'm doing both. I'm uploading it to a, in this case, you know, Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcast, and then for YouTube, sometimes I'll just put a thumbnail and upload it like that. But then there are other podcasters who do these live streams and then they call it a podcast. So maybe I'm out of touch. But anyway, I listen to these guys or I watch them. And then there's an argument about, oh, my God, there's like a civil war between PlayStation people. You know, now there is a small demographic of us who, like myself, I prefer the PlayStation console. That can change, of course. Anything can change. We're consumers. At the end of the day, you want more bang for your buck. You want to go where the quality is at. And if you can afford it, you're going to go with it. So I prefer what PlayStation has been doing for the past, you know, two generations. So, well, since basically since they came into the market, they've been always Sony and the PlayStation has always delivered. So. There's been an argument, right? Or, or there's been debates, you know, in regards to MLB The Show 21 being on Game Pass and what should Sony do for the PlayStation fan base and, you know, those who stuck with MLB The Show for so long and made it what it is. And it's, I remember back in the day when, when MLB The Show wasn't that good compared to some of the competition. And then. During the PS3 era, it just skyrocketed because the quality became better. It became a true simulation. It's, it's a difficult game. It's a difficult baseball game. And if you put it on, like, if you leave it on the default difficulty, it adapts to your play style. And the better you get, the better the CPU gets. So it's a really in-depth game. Great looking. The sound is amazing. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a game that for those diehards who play it every year, they're going to get a little ticked off that it's on a ser on a rental service in one console and not on the other. And so people were like, oh my God, the civil war among Sony people, right? And I'm part of that Sony group. And what I mean by that is that we talk about video games, specifically Sony games, and we, you know, make our reviews. We do an uh, uh, so an analyzing the news or basically talk about the console or talking a little trash about Xbox here and there. So that's what they mean by Sony guys or Sony people. And in one of the podcasts, there were a bunch of, you know, there were a bunch of people on the show and they were all basically debating and they all had different views and they all had something to say. And at the end of the day, that is the reason why I listen to these shows because it just proves that these guys have a mind of their own. They're not afraid to talk. They're not afraid to disagree. They're not afraid to shout. And when all is said and done, they can still be adult enough to maintain a friendship, to maintain respect for one another, and then call it a day. They don't 
go and start bashing each other on social media and the, or they call each other names. They don't. And the fact that they don't all agree is the great thing because as someone who has been playing video games for as long as I have, I grew up talking to people just the way these guys were talking, but face to face, arguing about video games because we were passionate. And afterwards, we either went and let's say we were playing MLB, you know, let's say if MLB the show was around back in my day, we would play it, we would go to my house, we would play it, talk some trash, and then whoever won was, you know, the king of the castle for a day, and then, you know what, we're like, ah, let's order some Chinese and watch a movie or something. Or maybe play another game. You know, that's how it was. It was okay to disagree. It was okay to yell at each other over a disagreement because you guys had strong beliefs, you guys were strong-willed, and you guys are individual. Individuals, excuse me. And that is why I titled this particular episode, I'm right, you're wrong, that's it. Because there are a lot of podcasts, there are a lot of people on social media that if you disagree with them, they cannot accept that. They, can't, they don't know how to handle it. And so they get offensive or defensive, and then they call you a troll, or they block you, or they talk about you on their podcast, or behind your back. And so it, it gets to a point where you don't want to say anything, but then you, you feel passionate about, in this case, video games, and you want to say something, you want to throw out some truth, you want to throw out some sensibility. But sometimes there's nobody to listen to it, or people just don't want to hear that. And that's that's a that goes with everything, not just video games, you know, like... People trying to educate others, people trying to s spread positivity, those people don't really get a lot of clicks or notoriety. They have to go elsewhere in order to have success within, you know, that type of that type of groove or whatever, you know? So negativity is especially video games. You see I, I think it was Kotaku they made such a, a, a blatant clickbait title article about Game Pass and and, and PlayStation Now and saying Game Pass gets this game and but PlayStation gets this and, and basically this in the game. I think this Avengers and just fueling a fire, right? And then when they get the feedback from people who don't appreciate what they're doing, then they start blocking people or they start blacklisting people or they start playing the victim. And that's that goes that goes on a lot in social media. So it's really frustrating, but me being me, I have to say something because you know what? I've been around this podcast scene since 2005. I've basically was instrumental in creating this community of content creator, regardless of what people think. So I'm going to say something because I've been involved in this for too damn long not to. And I know a lot of the times, most of the time. <laughs> What I say really just about, you know, number one, the audience is not there or people just don't really give a shit. But you know what? Hey, somebody will listen, right? So I do it for those individuals who feel like they can agree with me. But anyway, I'm JVB. This is another episode of the Post Game Report podcast. I'll talk to you later.